My mate James and I often go on backpacking adventures around the world, but this next week, we're mixing things up by going on a mini adventure around our own country. I guess that's what this trip is about, is exploring things that are right on our doorstep but we never bother to do. We're going to have three weekend adventures exploring Britain, heading to the cities of Manchester, Newcastle and Glasgow. Welcome. <laughs> I've never been to Glasgow before. Get your kilt off. <laughs> this is the best pie in the entire country. It evolved into this special feature. One of the best things about these northern cities is they've got all this stunning countryside right beside them. A couple of weeks ago, I was approached by IHG, the Intercontinental Hotels Group, to make a film about going on weekend adventures at home here in the UK. Now, IHG, they're a global organization. They've got a broad portfolio of hotels in nearly 100 countries around the world. So why have they asked us, two Brits, to make a film about traveling around Britain? Because obviously, we're not gonna have the same wide-eyed enthusiasm as a foreigner traveling here for the first time. But that's not what this trip is about. This trip's about showing us Brits what our own country has to offer. So what's unique to each city, the hidden gems, and other cool things to do for people who are looking to have a staycation. And yes, apparently staycation is actually a word. So IHG have invited us to go to Manchester, Newcastle, and Glasgow. And in the interest of time, we're not gonna be doing this as three separate weekends. We're gonna be combining it all into one trip and seeing the three cities over the course of a week. Now, IHG have sent us some ideas of things to see and do, but I've also got tons of ideas from people on my Facebook page, and even had some like old friends from school get in touch with some ideas as well. And James is coming along for the ride again, and first up, we're gonna be getting the train from London in the morning, heading straight up to Manchester. Alright, we just got off the train, gonna head to our hotel. Luckily it's only two minutes walk away from here, so we're staying at the Holiday Inn Manchester City Centre. We can just check in, dump our bags, and then go straight to the town. We got free Wi-Fi. <laughs> straight on the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's what hotels are for, aren't they? <laughs> Never lived in such luxury. <laughs> How many people are going to be in our room? 12. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a treat for us, we used to backpacking. Yeah. I've got your gold membership attached to the bucket, so thank you very much for your loyalty. Just oh, need an yeah. email and a signature on the bottom. And as a gold member, would you like the extra 300 points or a drink voucher? A uh, drink voucher. Yeah. <laughs> are, we, are you a gold member, are you can't? I'm, I'm guessing they just automatically signed me up. Play your movie. If you want to be. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxing in the room. James in the giant mirror. Hello, That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we've checked in our hotel. Um, we're bang in the centre of town, so we're just going to go and explore now. Now, I've been to Manchester a few times, but only to go to gigs, so I've never actually really explored around. Even though James and I went to Liverpool University, which is only like 30 odd miles away. Never really made the effort, but I guess that's what this trip is about. It's sort of exploring things that are right on our doorstep, but we never bothered to do, so. You've lived in Manchester for a bit though. Yeah, I used to work here for six, a few months. Yeah. Did be, I've been to, I've been everywhere, mate. Yeah. You can show me around and be my tour guide. That's why I brought you, be a tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna head to this grub market to get some grub, and then go and explore the Northern Quarter. Do not just yourself because the revolution hasn't happened yet oh you know we'll never have this night again so come and tell me if not now gonna get some mac daddy's mac and cheese just what you love you let it several hits the spot it's a beast mate <laughs> it's pretty good yeah <laughs> good man First random find of the day, Darth Vader playing Star Wars theme tunes in the middle of Manchester. Well, I bet he was playing... Uh... Oh, he's originally was playing Bohemian Rhapsody and then he, stuck, he went to Star Wars themes. Oh, okay. We're 
heading to the Northern Quarter, which is known as Manchester's Creative Quarter, full of trendy cafes, bohemian bars, vibrant street art and quirky little shops. This store's called Afflex and it's selling lots of random t-shirts. It's in like Michael Jackson jackets, Alcatraz hoodies, but they've also got lots of like movie themed t-shirts, which is very dangerous for me. This is where I end up spending lots of money. Get the wig! I might have my Pickle James picture. <laughs> Pickle James! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Pickle James. So cut, cut, come on, scream. And top your lungs, oh. Momentum, all real, my careless sons who say for real. Considering we both recently just got back from Japan, this does remind us of kind of the stores in Akihabara with all the random old games and memorabilia and stuff. Gotta find just what you love. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect for you. Back to the friend zone. <laughs> so this is the first time that James has come on like a sponsor trip. And so we're trying to figure out his official role. I'm the director now. <laughs> I'm the director, the producer. The only thing I don't do is edit. <laughs> I leave that to Carl, because that's his expertise. I'm the commercial manager, I'm telling him to play the finances. <laughs> He's doing editing, Carl, <laughs> and filming, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the star. <laughs> Alright, so uh, James used to DJ and spent a lot of money collecting. Oh, well, well, I used to pretend to or try to DJ. DJ. Yeah, um, <laughs> but spent all his money on these dubstep records and things like that. But how much did you used to spend on them? How much did they used to cost? Six pounds of vinyl. When I was a teenager, I used to collect records. I had a record player, but then it broke and I haven't bought any records since, even though vinyl's back in fashion. But right now, we're sort of in like the cool area of records yeah we got dubstep so in order to find the stuff I used to buy I have to go to sort of the other area <laughs> rock and pop 12 quid it's you mate <laughs> I'm not fucking good I'm smiley <laughs> oh, that's so I hear those two words <laughs> and my body comes alive you say it's true so we did a poll about who thought was going to win the table tennis on Instagram stories. 70% of people thought James would win. That's a win in my eyes, Carl. I don't care if I lost. That's a win. <laughs> <laughs> All you doubters out there, I won. 4-1. <laughs> I let him win for the camera. <laughs> We spent the rest of the evening exploring the various random bars of the Northern Quarter, plus we met up with a couple of friends along the way. Uh, so we're in the Cane and Grain, and they've got like a, a secret door, it's just there, but there's a secret door that leads you to another bar. Secret doorway! Oh, come on, don't leave me hanging. Oh, no! You're leaving me hanging now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was mean! <laughs> it's day two in Manchester, so we just come down to the hotel reception, got a full on buffet breakfast, and you can't start your day any better how about getting a full English in. So I'm gonna eat this up, then we're gonna go explore the town some more. This is St. John's Garden, it's just tucked away from the main busy streets, nice little place to come chill out, but today it's been turned to a bit of a winter wonderland because of the snow. The weather's been really weird today, it's like sunny and then these snow clouds come through, so you've got like winter, summer, winter, summer. You've seen around town lots of pictures of bees, like in the graffiti you'll see bees everywhere, it's on the bins, it's in the bars, and basically the bee, or the worker bee, is like the motif of Manchester and uh, this came about during the Industrial Revolution because Manchester was the first industrialised city in the world and the worker bee became the symbol because Manchester became a hive of productivity and these the canal systems we were seeing they were built to connect up the different cities so they could transport goods from one place to another and even from one coast to another so all these industries could combine and that's how all these places developed.
We've just come up to Cloud 23 bar to get a lovely view of the city and also escape the cold because it's absolutely freezing outside today. It's been snowing. Come by. Come by. Mm -hmm. It's also St. Paddy's Day today, so um, there's a bit of festivities going on in town. Uh, we saw a venue earlier with a cool live band playing. Might check out more of that later and just see what other little hidden gems we can find. <laughs> Uh, we're talking of hidden gems. Uh, this bar here, you could easily just walk past and miss, but basically it used to be a Victorian toilet, and now they convert it into a bar. I don't know how much of a hidden gem it is though, because it's pretty packed when we got in there. But yeah, it's a cool little bar, jukebox, good music, good beer, it's a nice little spot. Jump oh, hi there. We're in the uh, John Violence Library. This is like an old Victorian library. It opens up probably in 1900. You don't want a sore neck. I still can't see anything. <laughs> it doesn't work. But it's nice just to wander around. It's free to come in here. Lots of Harry Potter vibes. And yeah, if you thought, we're going to do a film about the UK and not reference Harry Potter. You were sadly mistaken. My understanding about libraries is you come to read books, but only not in this one. <laughs> this is my hat, by the way, it's not a prop. The weather continued to deteriorate, and so we quickly popped into the National Football Museum before it shut for the evening. <laughs> then we tried to get into another one of the bars that was recommended to us. It looks like a laundrette and you have to go through the uh, washing machine to get in, but you have to ring a number to get in first, but poorly booked. We decided to regroup at the hotel bar, where we met up with a couple of friends and then headed down to Chinatown. Apparently it's the second biggest Chinatown in the UK, which makes me wonder how small the other ones are, because it's not that big. But, uh, and we got with us right now, joining the crew, we have the other James. Yes. James the second. And um, we got the other Watson. Chris. Hey. 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 There we go. You are James oh, Watson. <laughs> <laughs> what have we spotted on the menu? Uh, we're going for the Szechuan sauce because Rick and Morty, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be tried. you got to find out what it is. Yeah. This is the only way to... Chopstick yeah. lessons from James. I'm going to embarrass myself then. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Try and make it, like, if you can't do it, you just make it like a fork. Uh, yeah, it's you guys. Yeah, I'm so excited for this Szechuan sauce. Finally. Um, Finally got the Szechuan sauce, Carl. <laughs> Yes. No, <laughs> Chris and James went for Rick and Morty. Yeah. So me and James got for just more traditional dishes. I was expecting it to be sweet. It's more salty. Basically sat down, delicious, delicious meal, and then we had some uh, bloke come up who'd um, seen the YouTube, so that was kind of bizarre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Do you live here in Manchester? I come here quite a, quite a few times, come here like once a month, probably yeah. it's the best restaurant in Manchester. Nice. So. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. <laughs> Take care, man. We'll watch you more out with you, too. Well, you'll be on it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. How's that, Carl? Oh, it just, just happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're leaving Manchester now. It was really good fun. We managed to squeeze on a lot of stuff, but if we had a bit more time, one of the things I would have been keen to do was to get out to the Peak District, because one of the nice things about all these northern cities, you've got the countryside right by them, because you know, living in London, it takes 45 minutes to an hour to get anywhere. In these northern cities, half an hour on the train, you'd be right on the countryside. But we're gonna try and do that in Newcastle and Glasgow, so it should be good fun. It was just a short two and a half hour train journey, before we were right up in the very northeast of England. The Newcastle Cup. Well, remember this moment forever. I grew up in Durham, which is 20 miles south from here. I got to wave at it from the window as we are coming up. But I haven't been based in the northeast for like 15 years, so Newcastle's changed a lot in that time. It's gonna be fun exploring around, seeing which bits I recognize, but seeing what's new, what's different. <laughs> and we'll be meeting up with some friends today as well. Yeah, the train station is literally just around the corner there. And our hotel is right here. It's the Hotel Indigo Newcastle, right back in the center of town. 
So we've literally just walked in a room, and it's well, not what we were expecting. We thought we'd just be like a normal hotel room. Hey! Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> so this right here is the Newcastle of Newcastle. <laughs> oh, that's right down my neck! <laughs> to show how cold it is here today. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another Harry Potter one for you. <laughs> this one chose me. <laughs> the nice thing about Newcastle, it's like even smaller than Manchester, so like everything's super quick walker distance. But we first come to Red House because people told us this is the best pie in the entire country. We're going to find out whether they're right or not. But it is absolutely freezing today. It's about one degree outside. It's been snowing. So it's just good to come here, sit by the fireplace, warm up before we start exploring the rest of the town. It's pretty good to be fair. It's good. I don't know if it's the best, but it's good. <laughs> How many pies have you had though? True. I've been on a pie tour of UK trying every single one, but it's a damn good pie. All right, so Tyne Bridge in Newcastle. If you're looking at it thinking it looks like the Sydney Harbour Bridge in Australia, it's because it's designed by the exact same people. They're based on the Hellgate Bridge in New York. And yeah, looks exactly the same, but only difference here is here in Sydney you can climb over the top of it. They don't do that here because you'll freeze to death. And we're on the quay side now. And they usually have a market on a Sunday, and today's Sunday, but they've closed it because of the bad weather. And but this whole area of the Keyside has developed so much since I left the Northeast. Like, there used to be pretty much nothing here, and now it's full of bars, restaurants, museums, theatres, completely developed and changed. Although the market was shut, fortunately the Usman Art Studios were having an open weekend, so we went to check out them instead. So what's, how does the studios actually work here? Like, do you actually work in this place? Or? Um, uh, various uh, artists and painters occupy yeah. the studios and uh, like myself come down different days in the week. Yeah. I usually come down two or three days a week and I process right. my images and, okay. uh, and then print them later. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then so it's like um, you rent the sort of gallery space or the studio space yes. and then you have open days like this? Yes. Ah, okay. It's at least four times a year because they change the main gallery upstairs. Right. Oh, so we got lucky then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been doing these photos for? Oh, about 20 years. 20 years, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like you're saying, most of your life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these ones are from south of France, right? That's oh, right. In France. In the Camargue. And that's the, the famous wild white horses. Wow. And I photographed them in a the lagoon down there. Wow. Yeah. Well, how, how do you achieve that effect? Because uh, I have to use various techniques, but yeah. I, I do do it in camera. Yeah, and sometimes. Yes. You put it on the wrong setting and it'll just look a mess. Uh -huh. And then like, accidentally you might get something that looks cool, yeah. but you've done it deliberately. <laughs> that's right, yeah. that's right. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of trial and error. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, and these ones here, for example, these are the lavender fields in Provence. Right. Well, you, you can see here you've got the grasses and the, yeah. uh, here you've got the mountains in the background, the yeah. field and the lavender. Incredible. As we continued exploring Usman Valley, we found another studio where we got to have a go at creating something for ourselves. This one we come to is called Kiln, and it's a cool little cafe slash bar, but also they've got a working room at the back. And for four pounds, we're going to make our own monsters. It's basically like being back at school. Now with Clay, it's little changes, bit by bit, yeah. by bit by bit. You want to get the general shape and feel of it before you start adding the details or smoothing it out. So I was thinking about doing like two double like snakes or something, dragons. Okay, yeah, yeah, you... oh, that's, that's fine, I guess. That's the plan. <laughs> see how it works, eh? I, I, I'm even big. <laughs> so you're going for intertwined snakes? Well, or dragons, I haven't decided yet. I thought about doing a full T-Rex, but it's probably going to fall over. I'm going to try and do a T-Rex's head. Just like, ah. We've got, both got two giant balls to work with. <laughs> and then let's just see what magic we can come up with. Every book I've read says maybe we are not dead. Status report, James. Failing. <laughs> I might have a little bit of play left to give him a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <it. laughs> 
<laughs> he's just like going, hey, get his arms out. <laughs> How do you feel about your monster? It looks a bit special. <laughs> I think our models speak wonders about our personalities because I've gone for like the classic kind of movie DQ T-Rex head. It's, it's tar I'm pleased with it. It's by no means a masterpiece, but I'm pleased with it. And James's one is a bit crazy, a bit special, but lots of fun. <laughs> it evolved into this special creature. <laughs> you don't mold the clay, the clay molds you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we had some nice comments from the people who work here, so I feel like a kid at school has just got a good mark. <laughs> what did he say? 4 out of 10 for you on a call? I think he said 10 out of 10. And I, I'm pretty sure he said, I mean, we should wow. Put it, put it to a vote. I, I, I'd say something about the best one we've seen today. <laughs> Alright, we're going to put it to the Instagram vote again. Whose is better? <laughs> I know which one's going to win. <laughs> We're continuing our evening in Usman Valley, and then we've got with us Katrina here. Hey! But then we've got Beth here, who was with us on our Round the World trip, or HK to MY. Uh, met her a couple of times in Cambodia, a couple of times in Thailand. Now we're coming to Newcastle, she's given us loads of ideas what to see. What are your top bars in Usman Valley? Well, we've got Common Dance, Free Trade, Clooney, The Ship, Tanner's Arms, Kiln. We've done some of those. I feel like I can't that point. Time Bar. It's not, well, it's not hidden, is it? Because everyone comes here. Okay, so you have to try and cross this bridge safely. So, baby. <laughs> 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 All right, what's the crap with Ernst Bar? Why, why, why are we here? Because there's great music, great drinks, really good food. And I'm here. And he's here. <laughs> it's so chill, like it's really chill and nice place to come. Nice. Final scores for the uh, monster making earlier. <laughs> 63% for James, 37% for me. I did well, I think. Yeah, we got enough of and forever we'll drink to that. This is the breakfast place that was recommended to us by someone else that I mentioned to my mate Stu, who I went to school with, about this place. And he's like, yeah, it's my local. I come here all the time. Uh, we are right. The ingredients. <laughs> home from home. Um, best breakfast in Newcastle, just down by the quayside. Uh, space is at a premium. We've got about 20 seats in here. So on the sat on the Saturday you'll be queuing out the door, but it's worth it. Uh, and today I've opted for the breakfast burrito, as has uh, Carl. Breakfast in a in a burrito. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Nice. <laughs> Walked in here this morning to meet Steve for breakfast and just sit on the table next to me was my old guitar teacher who I haven't seen for 20 years. <laughs> um, so that was pretty random. But yeah, Stu and I were in a band together at school and we're also, he still has a band now that I was a part of for a couple of years before I went off and did all the traveling. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so apply and buttery. <laughs> I, I am an aficionado of breakfast anywhere in the world. <laughs> this is my hometown. This is the best breakfast in Newcastle. Heard it here. There you go, that's a sound bite and a half. Right. Yeah, so we're just in here for a spot of breakfast and then we're gonna get the train out to Hayden's Wall. Um, and maybe be waiting our way through the snow, but it should be a fun day. It was a 45 minute train journey plus a quick taxi ride to get to the start of our walk along Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, I used to come here as a kid all the time, um, but I haven't been here for about 20 years, so it's kind of nice to be back. The weather's just about good enough to do it. It's like a nice sunny day, and the snow's hopefully melted enough for us to do the walk. Hadrian's Wall was built by the Romans in the year 122 AD. It took six years to complete and runs the entire coast to coast width of Britain stretching 73 miles from the Irish Sea to the North Sea, creating the northern boundary of the Roman Empire. There are a few theories as to why the wall was built. 
Some say it was to stop invasions from the barbarians in the north, others say it was to control immigration, while some believed it was simply a statement of power by the Emperor Hadrian. Hurry up, Carl. I'm coming. Oh, he's late. <laughs> Right, this spot here is, the official name for it is Sycamore Gap because there's a sycamore tree in a gap. But what it's known to me and most people now is the Robin Hood tree. This tree was featured in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, came out in 1991. And this is a bit in the film where, you know, they've just got back to England. And so they land on the cliffs of Dover. And then they decide to walk from Dover to Nottingham via Hadrian's Wall. But yeah, this is where he first meets Guy Gisborne. So yeah, it's a bit of an iconic spot from the film. And yeah, we used to come here all the time growing up this little spot in wall. It is fun to be back here though, basically revisiting a place from my childhood, reliving all the walks we've done here growing up in the northeast. Well, we're heading back to Newcastle now. It's been a fun day out, beautiful countryside. Bit of ancient Roman history, bit of movie history. Fun day out. So you want me to film you, do you, Pa? Please. Okay. Oh, Carry on, mate. See if I can make his mouth move. So what do you want to say, Carl? He wanted to say that this is the old George Inn, which apparently is the most haunted pub in Newcastle. Um, when did it say it was built? 1582 or something? Yeah, this we're in the bar 1582 right now. We're in bar 1582, so uh, yeah, old pub, but that's why I love being back up north. Two beers cost five pounds. London, one beer costs more than five pounds, so yeah, it's nice. Now Stu's joining us again in a minute. We have the return of Stuart Rook. Yeah. So this is Earl Grey here, Charles Earl Grey, as in Earl Grey to Earl Grey, and he built this street here. It's called Grey bare hands. Yeah, it took him a while, but he got it done in the end. <laughs> it's a monument to his persistence. <laughs> What's this place then, Stu? Uh, botanist, the botanist. James yeah. just said it's like being in Alice in Wonderland. Which yeah, I'm waiting for the cat to come down now. If I'd seen the film, I feel like I'd agree. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit, not, it's a bit of a clue Alice what bar it is. I'm aware of she, takes, she drinks <laughs> something, she gets big, she drinks something else, she gets small, and then she goes on a crazy trip down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Sums it up about it. I've seen the play, is it, what, is it a Tim Burton yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of a suit going, I was asking you what's the name of this bar, just for the sake of camera, but if you turn to your right... Yeah. <laughs> there's a giant sign. <laughs> We're on our last night in Newcastle. When I say last night, I also mean second night. But um, we've signed up for the Passions to India train. It's a couple people recommended us to us. There's um, a village called Corbridge, it's got this great Indian restaurant. So they set up this thing where to get you on a train out there, and serve you with beer. And we've already been on the platform with the menu, put our order in, and then they take us out there, go for a lovely Indian meal, and then take us on the train back. And, like nice, fun, simple evening out. Now, normally if you do this on like a Thursday, Friday or Saturday or Sunday night, there'll be about 40 or 50 people on the train together, all drinking, all going to the same restaurant, big party, but because of the way this trip's worked out, uh, even though we're doing weekend adventures, we're here on a Monday night, and, uh, and yes, me and James. Pat after St. Patrick's Day. It's after St. Patrick's Day as well, so, uh, St. Patrick's weekend, so, yes, yeah, me and James, uh, just just having like VIP treatment on our own private-ish train to India. But that's uh, gonna be good fun. It's gonna be really good fun. To India. <laughs> to India, that's like the passage to India train, yeah. So Corbridge technically, but Amazing. IP. Beautiful restaurant. I'm looking forward to the food. Onion barge please. Yeah. And bring an empty bread, sir. Thank you so much. Good on your bhaji, mate. Yeah, I'm not like a massive fan of onion bhajis. This is absolutely brilliant.
Are we gonna eat all this? <laughs> We're gonna try. What we've been presented with here, it's like a food challenge almost. This looks delicious and amazing. Let's see how far we get through it all. <laughs> this is food for two. <laughs> <laughs> That is definitely one of the, if not the best curry I've ever had. Can't eat anymore, but it's absolutely brilliant. And also, I know like in a few days time I'll be at home and eating the food that I cook, which will be terrible. And I'll be looking back at here and going, why didn't I just eat more? But I'm just so full. Yeah, I might fall asleep in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it was perfect. The service here has been amazing. The restaurant's beautiful. So yeah, we got the, the passage to India train and had the best curry I've ever had. And not to sound like a dip, but I've been to India as well. This is probably the best curry I've ever had. There you go. Wow, uh, you do sound like a dip. <laughs> the next morning, I grabbed a quick breakfast at the hotel before we boarded the train to Glasgow, the third and final city of our trip. <laughs> Get your kilt off. <laughs> yeah, it was just a couple of hours on a train from Newcastle, and then as usual, five minute walk to the hotel. We're at the Holly in Glasgow City Centre, Theatreland. Your room is just in that corner there for you, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. What day are we on? Uh, day five. Wednesday, Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Yeah. I've never been to Glasgow before. I've been to Scotland many times. My brother lives in Edinburgh. Uh, did a trip to the Highlands quite a few years ago. One of my old travel videos, but I didn't really know what I was doing. But um, but um, we have this thing going on that every time I say but um, I have to have a drink, and I say it all the time. Um, <laughs> but um, we are gonna this afternoon. We're gonna explore the Merchant City, which is like the cultural quarter, of Glasgow, which is basically right on the doorstep of this hotel. Uh, go on like a mural trail, see some like the artwork around the city. But yeah, just ready to go and explore Glasgow now. Cool. And that's James. <laughs> Many mirrors in this room. The mural trail we were going to partially follow was created by the city centre regeneration team in 2014. Six years before then, the first mural appeared, with various local artists creating a diverse range of art to help rejuvenate streets and revitalise buildings and vacant sites. By brightening up the streets, it's made them inviting for locals and tourists alike and has helped support local businesses. Yeah, this street art is incredible. I'm really impressed. The amount of level of detail I've got on this as well. It's huge and all the way along whatever this building is here. I did not expect the weather to be this good in Glasgow. Of all the places, it's the nicest day we've had. It actually feels like spring instead of winter. James had regretted not buying these shades in Manchester. <laughs> I reckon I could pull them off. So we popped into another retro clothes shop to see if we could find him a pair. A bit bright those ones, it's a bit too see-through. The other ones you can see through. So we just come for a drink in Super Barrio Bar. Uh, I was full of all these old arcades. Some of them are free, some you gotta pay, but it's a cool little spot. Again, it reminds me of being in Japan to play loads of arcades in Japan. Hundred yen. <laughs> After getting our game fix, we met up with our friend Kim and headed towards the west end of town. Our first stop in the Riverside Museum of Transport. Scottish pub. <laughs> it looks exactly the same as pub. Just you two waiting all day. Ever gonna get served? <laughs> you don't get pubs anywhere else in the world. 
We are strolling through Calvin Grove Park, and Kim, yeah, who's the most <laughs> Scottish, as far as Scottish people go. The most Scottish you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're born in Glasgow, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm born in Glasgow. I grew up in Australia, kind of. But now you're back in Scotland. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the only member of my family who lives in the country they were born in. I'm the Scottish as they come. <laughs> Apparently, what was it you were telling us about Oasis? <laughs> They're Scottish? <laughs> They're not Scottish, but they were <laughs> um, signed at King Tut's Wawa Hut in Glasgow. So really... They're technically Scottish. Scottish. Oasis don't belong to Manchester, they belong to Scotland. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Without Glasgow, Oasis wouldn't be. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta cut that out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Kim becomes the most hate person in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Just popped into the chai of the tea house, a very zen, chilled out place where you can try teas from all around the world. To be fair, it smells absolutely amazing. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. We were asked to go to, and I wanted to go to, a Harry Potter shop, uh, being a big nerd I am, but we weren't allowed to film in there because of copyright reasons. So, yeah, which meant we have to fast forward and then come straight to the bars instead. We are on Ashton Lane in the West End. It's supposed to be a really cool night of life spot. Now we're in Oranmore, which is like a, what used to be a church, now we converted to a bar. And uh, yeah, the more the merrier. Yeah, more the merrier. That's, that's the slogan goes in the walls. And these guys are trying out the local whiskey. In Scotland, you like good whiskey, car. What are you drinking? I'm drinking, drinking, whiskey. I'm drinking their local pills now. In Scotland, you've got to get the uh, beef and haggis burger in. It's one of those baked pies. <laughs> Fail. So then tonight we're going to go to the oldest music hall in Britain to watch uh, some Looney Tunes with a random evening on. So. During the day yesterday we went to the Britannia Panopticon Music Hall, which is the oldest music hall in the country, and they said come back in the evening because they have, no, they have like special evenings on most days of the week. And this particular night on, they were showing old Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> We kind of had like this little cinema set up in the oldest music hall in the country watching Looney Tunes, which is yeah pretty bizarre, but it was a good fun thing to do in the evening, something a bit different. James so put a request. Yeah, you can't have a Roadrunner. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. Meet me. All right, it is our last day in Glasgow and the last day of the trip actually. Um, Glasgow's got a really good vibe, we had a really good time here actually. Like I've, like I said before, I've never been to this town before, so it's been really fun exploring around and seeing seeing what the crack is. And then this morning I just popped downstairs in the hotel to get a lovely breakfast. So I guess it's a, not a full English, it's a full Scottish breakfast because I had haggis and everything. And then the plan for today is we're going to hire out a car and go to Loch Lomond, uh, which is just, you know, 45 minute drive away again. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice way to end the trip, just get in the car and go up to sort of like what they call it, like the edge of the highlands. I don't think it's technically the highlands, but at least get a little bit of a taste of that beautiful Scottish countryside. All right, first stop of the day, Falls of Follock. Guessing Follock's how you pronounce it. I've been getting all these names wrong, but let's go with Follock. It's right by the road, so just pull up and the falls are right here. Beautiful. So nice to get out of the city as well. Just an hour's drive and you'd be at places like this. You can't expect us to do one of our trips and not come to some waterfalls. Uh, it's pretty spectacular though. I don't think we're going to go for a swim today, mind. So that waterfall right there, we're going to try and hike up to. Not sure if we're following the path or just the stream, but see if we can get there. Basically surrounded by waterfalls in this valley. 
We gotta get closer through the mud. Oh. Huh. A bit of a strenuous walk up the stream. Not wearing the right shoes or anything as always. But yeah, it's a beautiful spot to finish up the trip. A lot of this trip's about showing these hotels bang in the center of town, which means you've got literally everything on your doorstep to explore in the city. But also, as I keep saying, just a very short journey, you can get out of the city into this beautiful countryside. And this only took us an hour to drive here. And I keep referring back to London. I mean, driving for an hour in London, you'd still be in London. So this is basically still on the doorstep of the hotel, I'd say. You come up here. Surrounded by beautiful waterfalls, it's kind of like being in New Zealand really, which is never a bad thing. And there's other, tons of other stuff to do around here, but obviously we're on a bit of a tight schedule. So it's nice just to come out here for a short time, see these beautiful waterfalls. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a great end to this sort of random little mini adventure we've been on. Yeah, we had a nice little trip and I'm really grateful that IHG invited us on this little journey because, you know, staying at their hotels just took any of the stress and hassle out of the journey because, you know, 10 minutes from getting off the train, we'd be checked in, bags done to be ready to explore the town, which is perfect for when you're away for just a weekend and every little moment counts. And doing these weekends away is really nice, especially if you're between two bigger trips. It means in the space of a weekend you can get your little travel fix without even leaving the country. And yeah, we had a lot of fun. We got to explore new places and old places and meeting new friends and seeing old friends like Stu. And by that, I mean, I haven't known Stu that long. He's just really old. But we had a great time. And if you want ideas on the best places to travel, check out ihg.com forward slash weekends. For the lowest prices on your next UK staycation, book direct through ihg.com. And as for us, we've got some big adventures coming up in the summer, plus next week I'm off to Norway to do some kind of snow survival thing. It's going to be crazy, but I can't wait. And then we still got our Japan series from our trip in January to come online, and I can't wait for you guys to see that. It's going to be so much fun. So yeah, make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon.